glad to be back with you. I've got a really neat problem today. This is a dynamics problem about drop towers. Now a drop tower is a device that's used to uh, help people doing physics tests where they need to have zero accelerate or zero gravity, simulate zero gravity. Now if you want zero gravity, obviously you can go into orbit, but that's really expensive. Another way to do it is to get put your experiment in an airplane that's flying a parabolic arc. NASA has a plane they use this they use to do this, and it's been nicknamed the Vomit Comet since people inside of it sometimes get a little air sick. Well, that's neat, but it's still really expensive. Another way to do it that's less complicated is something called a drop tower. You can kind of imagine what a drop tower is. Let's say you've got a payload, okay, you've got some sort of physics experiment that needs to see zero gravity for a short amount of time. Well, you go up here, you put your payload in there, and you've got some kind of catching device here that's going to decelerate it, and you just simply drop it, catch it at the bottom. Okay? As long as aerodynamic drag is negligible, then you can assume you've got pretty much zero G on the way down. Now, aerodynamic drag being negligible, well, maybe you could streamline your payload, or if you want to get really elaborate, you can evacuate the tower. You can make it airtight, pull all the air out of it, and drop through a vacuum. If there's no air, there's no aerodynamic drag. Okay? So, this is a pretty good dynamics problem. Let's work this out. Well, let's say we need three seconds of free fall. And we also don't want to destroy the payload in catching it. So, let's say the payload can handle 10 G's. So, we decelerate, decelerate at 10 G's where g equals 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? So there we go. So let's find height of the tower and height of, let's call it the deceleration area. What I don't know what you'd call that thing, but the, the pit where you're going to decelerate the thing. This is what it would look like, at least in concept here. Got a tower. Alright, and there's my pit there. Okay, and so I'm going to drop from right there. There's my, there's my payload will be right there. And I'm going to call that, okay, x, t, positive. Okay, that's the, the direction I'm going to call positive. And I'm going to put some sort of uh, springy thing in there that's going to decelerate at a constant 10 g's. And so this height is going to be h tower. And that height right there is going to be HD for deceleration. So let's find HT and HD. That shouldn't be too hard. Well, the solution here. Let's use a very simple expression that we, we learn early on in dynamics class where we talk about constant acceleration. Well, we're falling under the effect of gravity. Gravity's constant, constant acceleration. Now, there's the expression right there. You've seen this before. A is going to be G here in a minute in the positive direction because down is positive. And what's initial velocity going to be? Well, initial velocity is going to be zero because we're holding the, the payload up there and just going to drop it. X zero is going to be zero because we're starting the coordinate system at the release point. So that goes to zero and that goes to zero. Well, do we know T? You bet. We know we want three seconds of free fall. No problem. Well, we know everything on this side. The only thing we don't know is on that side of the equation or the equal sign. Let's work it out. So it's one half times 9.81 meters per second squared times three seconds squared. Okay, now let's do two things here. Number one, let's check the units. Always, always, always check your units because if your units are right, the numbers will pretty much come along for the ride. If the units are not right, the numbers are very unlikely to be correct. So if you don't check your units, you're missing out on a chance to check your answer check the units, you're going to get the right answer more often. So meters per second squared times second squared, going to be meters. We're good. Now the other thing I want us to do here is let's think about how to estimate this number. Before you pound that through your calculator, it bothers me when people just write down whatever number comes up on the calculator screen. Okay, that's a good way to get things wrong. Let's think about this. One half, let's see, 9.81, that's pretty close to 10, right? And that's 9. Right, let's, let's try this. The answer is approximately, and the little wiggly equal sign means approximately. Let's see, 9 over 2, 9 over 2 times, and that's about 10 meters. So my answer ought to be about 45 meters. Okay, 
a little less, since that's a little less than 10, so maybe, I don't know, 44. Well, I know because I figured this out beforehand, that the right answer is 44.145 meters. Well, when that number comes up on the calculator screen, I'm expecting something in the neighborhood of that. That's in the neighborhood of that. That's good. So when that number comes up, I have confidence that I've got the right answer. 44.145 meters, and we'll fall for three seconds. So we've already got that. Now it's time to get the height required to decelerate. Well, let's see. I'm going to write this down again. That would work pretty well the first time. Let's just use the same expression the last time. There's more than one way to solve this problem. I'm going to just recycle the same expression since we're familiar with looking at it here. Okay, now this is for the, for the deceleration now, not for the drop. So V0 is going to be something different. V0 is very definitely not 0 now. X0, well, is it or isn't it? Well, let's, let's do this. Let's say that now that I'm looking at XD, that's going to be XD positive down. That's a terrible arrow. There we go. Positive down. So yeah, I can still throw that away. That is truly 0. What's that? It's not zero, it's the height right at, or the velocity right at impact. Well, let's see, V final equals V initial plus AT. And this is now for the drop, not the deceleration. V final for the drop is going to be V zero for the deceleration. In fact, let's call this V zero just to keep things consistent. All right, this V zero really is zero because velocity at drop was zero. Acceleration, well, that's going to be G. Okay, so it's 9.81 meters per second squared times 3 seconds. Well, check the units. Meters per second squared times seconds is going to give me meters per second, so that's good. And what's approximately the right answer? Well, about 10 times 3 should be a little less than 30. Okay, 29.43 if you work it out. Okay, a little less than 30, so that's, that gives me confidence that I've got the right answer. So that's this number right here, it's 29.43 meters per second. All right. Now what about that one? That one's going to be 10 g's, but it's going to be in, it de accelerating upwards. It's going to be accelerating opposite of this. It's actually deceleration. So that's going to be minus 10 times 9.81, 98.1 meters per second squared. Okay. Let's just go ahead and put those numbers in now. And see what we get. Oh, we got one more problem though, don't we? We need to know what t is. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Well, let's let's recycle this same problem, same expression again. Plus at. Now this is for deceleration. Now, well, what's my initial velocity? I know what my initial velocity is. What's my final velocity? That's going to be zero. The whole point is to have this payload hit this deceleration mechanism, airbag, spring, foam pad, catcher's mitt, something, and it decelerate to zero velocity. Okay? So I know that's going to be 29.43, and that's going to be minus 98.1. Now I know everything in this expression except for that. I've now got one equation, one unknown. Well, let's see. Let's solve for t. If I do this right, I'm going to get V0 minus V0 over A equals T. Well, that's going to be minus 29.43 meters per second divided by minus 98.1 meters per second squared. Meters per second divided by meters per second squared going to give me seconds. Okay, and remember how that was 3 times 98.1? Well, that's 3 times 98.1 over 10. That's going to be 3 over 10, 0 0.3 seconds. Okay, so we've got that now. Now we know everything on the right side of this expression. T is 0 0.3 seconds. So we got, that's just a number. Got that, got that, got that, got that. We're good to go. So let's just work this out. And guess what? This number might look a little bit familiar. XD is going to be 4. 415, pretty much, meters. It's going to be one-tenth of that. Well, let's think about this. We're falling at 1g. We're decelerating at 10g's. Makes sense that this would be one-tenth the distance you get there. 
All right, so that's 4.415 meters. Again, I just rounded that 4.4, 44.145, I rounded that up to 1.5. Okay, last thing to leave you with here. We've, we've, we've solved the original problem, but it suggests maybe there's a way we could change the design to make the drop tower a little more uh, flexible, give us a little more uh, possible zero acceleration time. Look at this mechanism down here. I've got it just drawn as a spring. But what if we could somehow compress this, that distance, accelerate at 10 Gs, and then have the, the uh, uh, acceleration mechanism stop, wait to, wait to catch the payload, let the payload go up and come back down. Well, it would take three seconds to go to the top of the, its arc, and another three seconds to come back down where it would be caught. If you could make this mechanism reversible, you'd actually get six seconds of free fall or zero acceleration time, zero G time, instead of three. I'll leave you with that thought. I hope this helps you in your dynamics classes, and I'll talk to you next time.